Listen, I'm going to tell you something about this game. The way I've been um, seeing and experiencing the music game. The music game is a game that is against you, the artist. The music business. The music business is against you if you are an artist. And the goal is what? The goal is to, once you hack the system and you understand how the system works and how to, to gain from the system, they will change the rules on you. It's something that I've experienced my whole 30 years in the music industry. I've always been independent at heart. And even when I was signed to, to, to Sony the, for my first two albums, I was behaving and actually my whole album, the first one was done independently and my second one was also done independently. Uh, and I, I never wanted to, to follow the rules and et cetera, et cetera. So when you are like me, your goal is to find how to hack the system and how to work around all the limitations they put on you. And trust me, limitations they put. Oh, uh, we're in France, you should not sing in English. Huh? Oh, uh, uh, this video, there's this, there's that. All bullshit just to prevent you from playing the game. Oh, uh, you, you, uh, you should sign this and this and this. If you want to play the radio, you're like, you have to give us a percentage. What? Like all type of stuff that I never wanted to comply with. And then there was always more barriers to me than to other people. The only difference is I understand the game. I understand my position and understand what are my next plays. And I also understand that I have to always be ready and thinking, out thinking them because they will always change the rules so that us get less money. And listen, you have to understand the way the internet works and why Spotify has to do what they have to do or decided to do what they have to do. Um, <clears throat> the game of the internet, if you are a, a startup, is this one. You're going to have a crazy idea and then you're going to submit your crazy idea to um, an angel investor, somebody who will be like, oh, I love your idea. Here's some money. How much money you need? Oh, I need a million dollars. All right. Here's a million dollar. Create your 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 idea. Oh, this is a, a website where people can publish photos, and they can come in and they upload photos, and the other people can like or comment. Also, it's like Twitter for photos. Yes, yeah, like Twitter for photos. Ah, how are you gonna call this? Instagram. Oh, we love it. I right. here's a million dollar. Or your friends and family or your economies, boom, a million dollars. You start working on your program and you buy some servers, you buy some bandwidth uh, on the internet because on the contrary to what people believe, uh, making, making data go from point A to point B on the internet, meaning point A is you and point B is the rest of the internet. So it means that if it has to arrive to 10,000 people who are all watching your content, let's say you have a song, it's in your server and 10,000 people are streaming the song from your server. This costs a little bit of money for each connection. 
So each person, each 10,000 people cost you money from sending your information from your servers to anywhere in the world where people want to watch. So when you have a small website, like, like when Bourbon decided to change their name to Instagram or when Twitter um, decided to change their name from audio to Twitter, it was small websites and it was only on iPhones or only on mobile or only on the web, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. All the website was, was the same thing. If you have a hundred users that are using your platform for free, and let's say they cost you a thousand dollars per day, and you have a million in your economies to make your thing work, that people tell you, hey, listen, you have two free years to make it happen. Your goal is to become a unicorn, to become so loved by people on the internet that you're gonna have 10 million people using your product, 100 million using your product. The problem is the more people are using your product, the more money it costs to have the data arrive to your users. And that's when you go to the second phase of which they call the phase, the, the seed, uh, seed B, seed C of asking more money to investors or big investors. Look, we have this platform, it's called Instagram. We now have, we went from 10,000 users and now we have 1 million people using the program. Um, but now it cost us 100,000 uh, per month to, to use the, the bandwidth. Ha! Huh? All right, so how much you need to survive two, three years and to pay everybody? We need five million. So people, they come, they give you money in exchange. They take a little bit of the company, 2%, 3%, 5%. So you have these big guys, Sequoia Capital, etc. Now, if what people don't know about Instagram is that once Instagram went from iPhone to Android and to the rest of everybody's phone and Justin Bieber and Kim Kardashian came inside of Instagram and they brought millions and millions of fans, Instagram went from 1 million users, 10 million users to 300 million users all of a sudden. And as successful as Instagram was, people were, were uploading so much photos to the, to, the, to the system that there was not enough bandwidth servers to serve everybody. That's why the site was crashing. Same as Twitter when you had the whales. And what people don't know is that when Instagram was the most popular site on the internet, just before they get bought by Facebook. They had no more money. They had no more, mo no more money because it cost way too much money to make the system work. And that's the moment where, to simplify, Mark Zuckerberg arrived and said, hey, I got money and I got servers. I'm buying your, your app for $1 billion. $1 billion? <laughs> Sold. Then they change all the infrastructure to Facebook servers and Facebook have millions of data, data center. They have their own servers. It doesn't cost them as much as you if you are an independent company to serve your, your, your data to the customers. And that's what, that's what they did. Spotify is an independent company. A lot of it belongs to the big labels, but most of it belongs to them. This is a Swedish company and they have the biggest, uh, yeah, they have the biggest site, right? When it comes to streaming, streaming music. And it costs them money 
to give unlimited music to people who pay $10 a month or people who watch, who listen to ads uh, between songs. It still costs them almost more money than it brings because every time you listen to a song on Spotify, Spotify has to pay whoever is their web, I mean, AWS is Amazon Web Service. So I don't know if they use AWS, but they have to pay the people who take the music that you listen to from, from Spotify servers to your telephone. So all these data, the bandwidth that is passing, they have to pay. And that's why they take you 30% of your money. And these 30% of your money, they use it to pay for the operation cost. And hopefully they try to get some benefit out of that. The 70% that is left, it's up, it goes to the record label, the artists, the publishers, etc., the creatives. Now, if they want to change their tune, is become is because probably way too many people are starting to hack the system. Understand that, hey, if I do 100,000 songs and nobody listens to them, but I, hey, listen, even if I get 10 plays per, per song, if I have 100,000 songs, that's a million plays, that's 3,000 euros. That's the way people are, are, a lot of people are playing this game because of way too many people. And again, it's always the same thing. The question we ask ourselves as creatives is who has the right to release music? Who has the right to sing? Who has the right to rap? Who has the right to put out music? And this is the real question that the internet has created. Before Twitter, information was on websites, and but most of us were reading the information in the newspapers or the news at night on TV. And that's where you had your information and that's the information that we used to trust. And then with the arrivals of places like Twitter, places like, I mean, the internet, social media, people get the information from any kind of source reputable sources some people don't believe the reputable sources some people get the information from twitter some people get the information from obscure website that i don't i never heard about some people are, some people it's on discord some other is 4chan some other is on reddit everybody get their information where they trust so there's a big fragmentation of the information source and the people who created Twitter, I remember what they were saying. They were saying, yeah, we want a place where everybody can talk. We want a place where everybody has a voice because the world is more and more uh, a dictatorship when people don't have a voice and we have to, to, to trust the governments. We have to trust the, the media and I'd rather hear from you from you and it was great until the liars were like yo there's a place where we can mass lie we can say a lie and you have a million people believe it and and it brought the question that who should speak when you say freedom of speech to everybody is it Everybody that is smart or also the racists, the, the, the anti, etc., uh, the, and the legions of idiots and the people who believe that they are smart, they're like, I'd rather only, only have intelligent people speaking, but this goes against the ethos of web two, the internet. The internet is, yeah, everybody can have a website, everybody can speak, everybody can tweet, right? 
But then soon as the first Nazi came on the internet and start saying whatever they say, everybody was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. You, you can't speak. You're not you. And he was like, Yo, you said everybody can speak. So, and that's when people realize there's a reason why a nation is a people with, that we've lost. When you have a group of people that obey, agree to obey a certain uh, set of laws, this is a nation. And there's a reason why you cannot walk naked, you cannot do this, you cannot punch somebody in the street, etc., etc. You cannot cross when the, red, the light is red or you get etc., etc. Those are set of rules that create the fabric of society. And the people who created the internet, a bunch of geeks who are dreamers and always want to be full liberty without rules, uh, they realize at a point, well, maybe we have to start putting some rules in there. So that's when Twitter invented the block button, when people started being banned from the, from the thing and all of a sudden, the idea of freedom of speech to everybody. Well, people realize. Not really. All this to say that with Spotify and the music business in general, that's where we are now. We are where everybody, anybody, can put out music. It's never been so easy to put out music. You can just wake up tomorrow, create a beat, can be a horrible beat. You can sing, you can sing a horrible song. And no matter what you say, no matter what you do, you go to DistroKid, you upload it, and in five days, it's gonna be on Spotify iTunes, Apple Music, Deed, X, Deezer, etc., etc., Title, whatever. And in the beginning, everybody saw it as the beautiful artistic freedom. Now, everybody has the possibility to express themselves. It's beautiful. In reality, the problem is the same as Twitter. At a point, if when you release a song, there's a hundred thousand people who release songs, well, your song is lost in the noise. Your song become a raindrop in the middle of a huge, a huge, uh, a huge rainfall. And this is exactly what we are experiencing as musicians. You have this schizophrenia of Yes, I believe that everybody should be able to sing. But at the same time, if everybody is able to sing, I'm not in competition with my 20 Zouk artists in France, West Indies, Guyane. I'm also in competition with the whole world. And not only I'm in competition with all the good artists from the whole world, I'm also in competition with all the okay artists, all the bad artists, and all, all the horrible artists. And I don't want to be the person if I'm for the freedom of expression of artistry. I don't want to be, be the person who decides who is good and who is bad. So who has the right to sing? Those who went to school to learn to sing? Those who sing in auto tune have the right to sing? No, yes, no. Those who play real instruments have the right to release music and the ones who program don't have the right. Those who download loops on Splice don't have the right. Those, Like everybody will see themselves as a real musician compared to other real musicians who will compare themselves to et cetera, et cetera. And it took us here in this position where everybody was tired of the fabric of the society that was created by the music label, which was, hey, 
you do shows, you do go do concerts, you do concert for years, and one day in a concert, there's an A and R or the label head of some company, one big company or one small label that discovers you, be like, yo, I love his style. They come talk to you. Hey, do you have a demo? Yes, I have a demo. Hey, come to my office. The A and R sees you. They listen to your music. They take you to the studio for six months. They pay a hundred k for you to be in the studio and to and they they bring you beat makers, engineers, people who do arrangements to turn your work into something that they can sell. Then they make. 90% of the money, you make 10% and you go tour, you make your money. If your music is success, everybody's happy. They make millions of you, you make hundreds of thousands, all good. And then the saga continues. And you know, people like me were like, nah, I don't wanna play this game. If when I do a CD, you make nine and I make one, you know what? I'd rather do it independently and make 10 by myself. So that's why when the internet arrived, I was happy. I was like, finally, I'm free. The problem is everybody else was free too. So all the people who, you know, were just frustrating doing demos but never succeeding, they could try as well. And now you have so much music on Spotify that it's hard to be discovered. So that's why now everybody's done by algorithms and it doesn't feel human anymore. And now everybody's complaining about the solution, right? So what, and all this costs money to Spotify. Because again, as I said, every time people are listening to your music, they have to pay as well. So what they decided, so it's not announced yet, but apparently what they're going to do is this, they're going to say that for one song to generate money now, it has to do a minimum of a thousand plays. And if your song doesn't do a thousand plays every year, we are not paying you for your streams. So that thousand, so... 1 million is 3,000, uh, uh, 100,000 is 300, uh, so 10,000 is 30, and 1,000 is free. So we're not paying you your free dollars. But because there's millions and millions of songs that only do 500 plays in a year, actually, they intend to save that money and use it to not only pay the operation costs, but also give to the artists who make more than a thousand plays per song. And a lot of independent small artists are up in arms, feeling that the party's over. And to these people, I say, guys, this is the cat and mouse game. Once you understand how to play the game, they will change the game. That's the way it is. That's the way it's always been. And all you have to do is find out how you're going to do. Now, is this going to remove people from putting their music on Spotify? I don't know. Maybe for the small, small, small artists, they will decide that they want to be in a platform that pay them for their every stream and maybe some some platform will say hey here at soundcloud we pay you from stream number one and maybe the platform will decide also where they fit in this game and maybe every platform will say this is our revenue model because it's interesting how everybody agreed to a revenue model when in reality Everybody should just have a revenue model that works for their platform. You're not even getting paid the same amount for the, for the same amount of streams. They count your stream numbers on YouTube the same as Spotify and the same as Tidal. 
if if you you want to have a, a, a in terms of sale they say 1005 stream is one sale but a million views in youtube in 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 Djibouti doesn't generate a euro because there's no ads there where a million stream in spotify will bring you 3000 but the same will bring you a little more in apple music and twice in title so already the whole way they calculate how they pay you is kind of arbitrary and some platform might some platform might arrive out of that and say hey starting now with us we pay this way or we pay that way or we pay more but you have to have a certain amount hey listen we pay you uh two times what spotify pays you but you need to make a minimum of 10,000 stream of your song in the year for example everybody will find something that works for them and it might be better for the platforms better for the listeners or better for the artist or worse we'll see um I personally believe that um, it really depends where you where you stand as an artist, meaning that how many how many streams you do per song per year. I I do millions of stream every year. I do I don't know twenty million streams, if not more, um, maybe thirty. I, I don't know. I, I didn't I didn't check how many streams I did this year, but most of my songs generate enough streams to get monetized but then i also have a lot of songs that i release that don't that don't that will not make the cut so is it gonna hurt my revenue i don't think so because i have enough songs that will get that revenue back by all my small songs not getting paid i will still get from the the distribution from more revenue that will be for the artist yeah i will i will be fine but if you are a very small artist and nobody knows you yet and you're pushing music to be on spotify you might not feel that there's a sense of putting your music there because if every song you do uh, do like i don't know 5,000 stream in the year. Uh, sorry, 9,000 stream or 500 stream in the year. Then you will not make any money from your songs, even if you have 100 songs. If you have 100 songs and all your songs only make like 900 streams per year, then you didn't pass the threshold and you will not be paid. So we are arriving a little bit like the, the monetization system of, uh, of YouTube, for example. Because that's exactly how it works on YouTube. On YouTube, I don't remember what is the monetization program number, but you have to have at least 1,000 hours of um, of people watching your content, and a certain amount. I don't remember how much, but you have to have X amount of views every year, minimum, to be able to monetize your content. If not, you don't make money from that content, and. Uh, yeah, listen, as I always say, if it's not your platform and you don't pay to be there, it's not your rules and you are the product. So.